So Lee, Insidious 3, um, you direct this film. Um, mm. What was it that made you decide to direct this one? I would always wanted to direct something. You know, it was one of those goals on the horizon, that kind of a mirage that gets further away from you the closer you get to it. And then Jason Blum, the producer of the first two Insidious films, asked me to direct this one. Um, James was busy doing something else. And I suddenly thought about it and thought, well, if, I'm, if, it's, if it's always been a goal of mine to direct, why would I turn down this opportunity to make something that I'm so familiar with, something that's you know, guaranteed to be released in theatres? And you know, half the battle with making a film today is getting people interested in it. There's such a blizzard of media content around us at all times, from the internet to gaming to everything else. Just just shouting to be heard in that in that noise is is a is an uphill battle today. Whereas an insidious film, a lot of the work's been done. It's an established franchise with a a fan base. So I I, I realised I'd be pretty dumb not to do it. Sure. Now you say it's an established franchise, which of course it is. How closely did you want to link this film to the other films? And uh, did you want to veer away from it as well in some way? Uh, I, I, I wanted the film to be linked to the other films whilst also having its own personality. Because, you know, I'm a different person to James. I, I wanted my personality to come through a little bit on this film. Um, James had a, a very specific style. You know, to me, he has a very recognisable style. And so I had to ask myself what my style was, you know, because I didn't want to copy James. The easy thing would have just been to just take what James did and kind of try and recreate it. But I actually tried to do my own thing on this one. Um, so hopefully I've succeeded. Do you think it was easier to establish your own style in a film, which is the third part of a series? Or would it have been better to start on a, a fresh project? Um, it was a, a tricky line to walk, but uh, you know, given that I had written the first two movies, I felt comfortable operating in the world. It, it wasn't like I was stepping into someone else's house and being like, right, I'm here, I'm redecorating, take down the curtains. Like the having written the first two movies gave me the authority to mess around with things a little bit. You know, um, I, I, I could change things, you know, and, and, and move them around and not have to feel guilty, you know, because I had that sense of ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously directing yourself as well in this one. How yeah. was that? How was that? How, how did you find that? It's pretty weird. I, I found myself being very flippant about m my own takes. I would do a take and look at the monitor and say, "Yeah, it's fine," you know. Whereas the other actors, I was so invested in talking to them. So that is a danger that you know when you're directing yourself as an actor, you you kind of think of yourself as an afterthought. You can be kind of too dismissive of it. So, you know, luckily those characters are kind of fun and funny. They're not, they're not it's not like playing Hamlet, you know, you, you sort of come in, crack a few jokes and, and, and kind of leave. And I always have fun with Angus. So, um, yeah, it was, it was fun. So tell us a little bit about the new characters that we meet in this film. Um, we meet the Brenner family. Um, Quinn Brenner is a 17 year old girl who's kind of finishing high school. She's at a crossroads of her life. She doesn't know what she wants to do. She's an aspiring actress. She really wants to talk to her mother, but she's lost her mother to cancer. And her family's kind of in disarray. You know, she hasn't quite dealt with the grief of that, and no, nor has her father or her brother. And so we, we, when we meet the Brenner family, they're at a really bad place, and then things just get worse <laughs> for them. And uh, they need the help of someone like Elise to, to you know, to rescue them. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it is a full-on horror. I think, for me, it felt very much like the first one as opposed to the second one. Right. Um, was that something intentional for you? Yeah, I mean, I did want to go back to the first one. You know, I, 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 I loved the way the first one built up the story of this family and there was a real mystery to it. You didn't know what was happening. And I wanted that again with a new family. Um, thematically, I really enjoyed this film in terms of the theme of death and the theme of loss and how Elise and Quinn were kind of mirror images of each other. You know, they were they were at different stages of their life, but they both were being were both stalled by their own grief. Mm -hmm. You know, excellent. And where can we see the series go? Do you want any more films in the in the series yourself? And would you be looking to star, direct, or write? It's hard to say. I feel like I need this film to come out. I feel like I'm holding my breath right now, and I won't breathe out until June the seventh. And you know, when the film comes out, everything's so focused on it. Um, and I'm very superstitious too, so thinking about other Insidious films, I feel like, is angering the movie gods. As soon as I, as soon as I start chatting to you about another Insidious film, I feel like lightning will strike and there'll be a, <laughs> you know, the Terry Gilliam-esque foot will come out of the sky and stomp on me for angering the gods. Okay, so outside of the Insidious franchise, what have you got lined up next? 
I don't really have anything lined up. I know I want to direct something. I really got the directing bug on this film, so I, I feel excited to make another film. The problem is, you know, it's, it's deciding on another film, and I'm so passionate about movies, and I, I, don't want to, I don't want to make a film for making a film's sake. I want each film to be really important to me. I mean, that's the only way you can get through it. You know, as you know, it takes such a long time to make a film. From the time you start writing to this point when you're sitting in a room in London being interviewed, it's like a year and a half, sometimes two years of your life or longer. So I don't feel I can go through that process if I'm not 100% invested. Uh, maybe there's some directors out there that treat it more like work. They're very workmanlike about it. Whereas I, I'm not like that at all. I'm, I, I, I take this approach of just pure passion. Um, I'm too lazy to operate on anything else but passion. <laughs> Excellent. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about the other thing that I mentioned at the start. Um, so the horror genre as a whole. Obviously a big fan, you've written many films yep. in the genre. And um, what is it about the genre that appeals to you? I love that the horror genre allows us to be negative about the world. It's one of the genres where you can have an unhappy ending and you'll be forgiven. Try having an unhappy ending in a, you know, a, a, an Indiana Jones movie. I mean, when people go see pure escapism, big action movies, they want the hero to get the girl or they want the, 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 the hero to get the guy, because they can be female heroes. And uh, they, they want to they wanna walk out of the theatre with a half-empty box of popcorn and a grin on their face, whereas horror, you can have the hero of the story die and it's acceptable. So I, I love that flexibility. I think it's a really malleable genre. You, you know, you can, you can marry it to other genres, make a horror sci-fi or a horror comedy. It's just fun. It's just a fun world to operate in, this kind of dark world. So you must have seen a lot of horror films. Um, yes. Probably brought up on them, I guess. Can I ask you some of your favourite horror films and some of the favourite scares from those films? I mean, Jaws was one of the first films that affected me on a very primal level. You know, I had nightmares for years after watching that film. I'd say the best scare in that film is the head popping out of the boat. That one got me, um, and still the anticipation of it <laughs> gets me. Um, the Shining, I hate the scene in The Shining when he's riding his little trike along the corridors and he stops and looks back at, the, at room 237. And he's kind of creeping towards the door. I mean, if I'm watching that film late at night to this day, that, that, that scene kind of rattles me. Um, I love the scene from The Others when she's stalking through the room, ripping the sheets off the mannequins one by one. When I first saw that, I was just sinking under my chair, like waiting for the worst. Uh, the Exorcist is kind of disturbing on a whole nother level. Um, and the scene when she first gets hypnotized is kind of one of the big ones for me. So there are a few scenes that have really stuck with me throughout the years. And how influential have those scenes been in, in your later movies? You know, The Exorcist was a big influence on this one. You know, I love that combination of kind of documentary realism with this sort of outlandish terror. So I tried to go a little bit for that. You know, I wanted the family to feel very real, very natural. And, uh, you know, so that when things started going wrong for them, you really, you know, it really hits home. Excellent. And Jaws for me is also is one of the yeah. big ones that I grew up with. Um, it's a PG film, which manages to be a big horror as well. Yes. Is that something that you think can be done nowadays? I think, it, I think it can, depending on the subject. You know, if you're trying to make a zombie film and make it PG-13, that's kind of difficult because zombie films kind of thrive on carnage and, you know, bodies being torn limb from limb. So it really depends. You know, horror to me is this big tree and each branch of the tree represents a different subgenre. So you've got zombie horror films, haunted house films, uh, monster movies, uh, you know, vampire movies, you know, and it depends what you go with. Um, so it depends which branch you pick. I think haunted house movies are particularly friendly to the PG rating because, you know, you don't need blood for a haunted house movie to be scary. That's not really the bread and butter of a haunted house movie. It's all about someone standing in the corner. So they can be very intense without needing to push it into an R rating. And I actually love that freedom of it. I think we got, a, got away with a lot in Insidious 3 that for a PG rating, you know. Hopefully it still feels really intense. Excellent. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You